This is Irish Illustrated Instant Analysis, brought to you by the RV Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. I'm Tim O'Malley, joined by Tim Priester of Irish Illustrated and John Bryce of Irish Illustrated and the Football Scoop. And after a bye week, self-scouting questions were coming. My first one was regarding Riley Leonard's usage. If not that I have a problem with Riley Leonard running the ball, but is there some way to limit that a little bit? And Tim Priester, it seems like that is not the case. Uh, as he said, Riley Leonard's a competitor. We all agree with that. Riley Leonard needs the ball for the offense to work. We all agree with that. But at this point, Riley Leonard is going to be a focal point of the running game going forward. Well, he's averaging about 80 yards rushing per game, so he's a significant part of it. No, you can't do that. And you can't – like, I, I don't want to say that you can't worry about injuries. There, there are times in a game where if you pull ahead of somebody that – you pull back a little bit with him, but Notre Dame's not in a position like that. They've got to win seven games, all seven of their games to, to qualify for the playoffs. So uh, I'm not surprised that he would say that, but I do think you need to pick your spots yeah. where you can accentuate some other aspects of the offense. And JB will switch right over to injuries. The pleasant news, Jordan Faison probable with his ankle injury. That is Tim Priester said that looked pretty nasty actually when it happened. Jordan Faison probable. Cooper Flanagan, questionable, not on the depth chart. I think that's just an oversight, though. Yeah. Billy Schroth, questionable. And I guess the good news, Gabriel Rubio was upgraded to questionable. He had been out prior, um, but I would not expect any of those three to play. Questionable has been out for Notre Dame. Yeah, it has been. And um, we saw Gabriel Rubio last a, a couple of weeks ago, the week of the Louisville game, and he looked a little further off than I think um, they had hoped or anticipated at that point in time. But uh, if at any point he can come back in the next few weeks, it's critical for Notre Dame. If you can get him to start working him in a little bit before that second bye right, week, right. that's going to make him that much more effective for your closing month of the season with what should be a chance to make a run to the playoffs. And then, Tim, if he, if he, if they save him for the final four games, you preserve your eligibility, right? They, Although he has, he has preserved he has, he has preserved it. Okay, one, I did yeah. want to mention that Christian Gray is back. Uh, I, we didn't right. really know mm -hmm. Sam Pendleton. I didn't know exactly what it was. Yeah. It is a concussion. He is expected to play. Ashton Craig had surgery. Of course, Traore is out for the right. year as, uh, as well. And uh, C.J. Carr was injured in practice. Now, he's a scout team quarterback, mm -hmm. so obviously he took some contact. Marcus Freeman said he's dealing with an elbow injury. Elbow soreness. Soreness, yeah. injury, soreness. It hurts. He was not dressed the last game, which is why this became a bit of an issue going in. But Marcus Freeman actually offered the, the news yeah. this time. Right. Yeah, I think he warmed up and maybe threw some left-handed and then didn't stay <laughs> stay dressed for the game. So that's certainly um, very interesting. And certainly you would think that um, a practice injury for your scout team quarterback could be avoided. Not new news, not surprising news, but with Traore out, Joshua Burnham will be the cross-training defensive end. As Marcus Freeman said, we like what Oban and uh, – Bryce Young have done on the strong side. Obviously, Tui Halamaka, I thought, played very well in his two instances so far at the Viper. And Logan Thomas is a developmental player that is coming on faster than we thought he would. Josh Burnham can play both, and I think that's crucial that they don't have another injury going forward. Those five should be fine. Yeah, I don't like. I don't know how sustainable Tui Halamaka's performance is week after week, but he's certainly taken a step forward. Josh Burnham has played Viper before, so that's a – we talked about, you know, what are they going to do, and that was a natural move to move him there. I think we see more of, of – uh, Bryce Young because I think that he has a chance to be more productive than R.J. Oban has been. And I think with, with Tui Alamaka, look, um, he rose to the occasion against Louisville, which we all agreed would be one of the very best yeah. offenses that Notre Dame would see the balance of this season. Uh, so as he continues to play with more confidence, Stanford, as you already noted, TP, and then Marcus Freeman addressed today, uh, dealing with a lot of injuries, then the tests aren't as severe for Junior as he continues to get more experience and more confidence at that position. Yeah, the test going forward, Junior going to be the academies, and he has actually played against an academy before. But you you asked Marcus Freeman about the Stanford situation at quarterback. Ashton Daniels was available but injured and did not play. And we joked if he's not in there, there's a little bit of wildcat situation going on is what it looks like when, Lath when Lantham is the quarterback. They, yeah. ha they have no yeah. offense without Ashton Daniels in the lineup. Uh, Lanson is yeah, he's a good runner. He's a goal line right. guy. They would have him in there regardless. But the guy that they like to use the most for uh, Wildcat was Michael Ford, a true freshman with a little bit of size and pop. He was injured with 40 seconds to go in a 24-point loss on Saturday, so that's a blow for them as well. 
uh, our colleague Pete Sampson asked about Mitchell Evans. I think it's an interesting question because of the bye week. When, when you come back and, and look, he, you're not rushed back because you're 100%, but he wasn't playing against Texas A&M if it wasn't Texas A&M. And then when you lose to Northern Illinois, you definitely need Mitchell Evans to accelerate the process. That week off should help. And that is one aspect of this offense. We get asked a lot, what can they be better at? Obviously, Riley Leonard can throw better. He can hit deep balls better. They can try more deep shots. But Mitchell Evans can help the short passing game as well. He can. And look, he's needed because, as noted already, Flanagan is questionable. And history says uh, questionable is out uh, under yeah. this new Notre Dame injury, injury policy and, and reporting process. So um, they need Mitchell Evans to have his best game of the year this week because uh, he's been building toward it and because uh, he needs to continue to take that step for, for his own personal recovery as well as the team recovery and then uh, Eli Raritan has to continue to do more and more. And we've seen them uh, both trust Eli more and be forced to trust Eli more because of the Flanagan injury. He's still got to clean up some things in blocking, but I do sense in, in, in talking with people in the program, they see some growing confidence also in Eli Raritan. Tim, I want to bring up Jordan Clark. Uh, uh, Marcus right. Freeman was asked about Jordan Clark, and, and he emphasized that, you know, you have to put team before me in those situations. And he, The headbutt he, situation. Yeah, the headbutt yeah. situation uh, where, he was, where he was flagged and could have and been been ejected, yeah. I guess, for that. You know, and I, I think as a coach, you it's a real fine line there. You know, when you're talking about somebody spitting on you, it, you, you would like to react properly under those conditions. I would think it'd be really difficult to do that. But Jordan Clark has been around for, for a while and, and has played a lot of college football. And so Marcus Freeman acknowledged that, and he said Jordan Clark, you know, fully accepted responsibility the same way Don Schuler did a week earlier when he was called for personal foul. Um, you know, along the sideline. So it's a tough situation. That I, was a different I, penalty. It really is. It <laughs> really Schiller is. And Jordan Clark were oh, different no, penalties. Yeah, no doubt. J <laughs> Jordan Clark, I mean, that's a natural reaction yeah. to a situation. But you're part of a, you know, 100-man-plus team, and you have to make the right decision. And I'm sure, you know, hopefully that's something that your entire team learns from, from right. not just the one player. Notre Dame moved up in the rankings by not playing. That's the way to go on the bye week. We'll have more about that on our Irish Illustrated Insider podcast coming up. Until then, for Tim Priester, Irish Illustrated, John Bryce of both Irish Illustrated and Football Scoop, this has been Irish Illustrated Instant Analysis, brought to you by the RV Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame.